useful work. Hi, Facebook. I was just saying to Instagram, welcome back to my studios. Welcome to a fabulous fermenting Friday. I've got something really exciting to show you today. I'm just going to adjust Facebook a little bit. Um, there we go. Now, I'm really sorry. I know when I was here on Wednesday, Facebook went down halfway through. I don't know what's going on because I should be having really good bandwidth here in London. Um, but obviously I'm on the two platforms. So I'm on Lizard Wellbeing Facebook page for the magazine um, because I don't personally have Facebook, but I do it on the Lizard Wellbeing magazine page. And then I've got my personal um, Instagram, which is Liz Earl Me. So, you know, to hop across. If one goes down, there's always the other as a backup, which is really good. Um, and yeah, here we are. And honestly, so much great feedback. It's I've got a couple of lovely things I just wanted to share with you. Being a Friday, and I was sent this. Uh, my team and I, my well-being team and I, uh, we do a kind of a Friday feedback um, or a feel good Friday where we share between ourselves, just circulate on an email, some of the really good things that have happened during the week and some of the lovely comments that we've received and all of that. And I just wanted to share some of these with you because it was just so lovely to hear. Um, so this one came from Caroline and she says, I feel so alive today. Uh, I have to thank you for sharing your knowledge on the menopause and referring us ladies to Dr. Louise Newson. I listened to you on YouTube and read articles on her site, finally took the plunge, started my journey on HRT. Just wanted to say thank you and I love you for all you do and you're such an inspiration. Thank you very much, Caroline. Just to say, if you haven't yet got into the habit of listening to my Friday Five podcast, obviously it comes out on a Friday, uh, I've just recorded it for later on today. I've got a little bit of an update on HRT and yet another scare story that's been in the news this week. Um, so you might want to listen to that if you are interested. Um, so, oh, too many nice glowing ones, which I'm too embarrassed to, to read out. But just lovely from Donna uh, says, I love Lizelle, all the hardworking staff like yourself who aim to enrich our lives. Yes, we do. Um, oh, this was so great. This was Zoe. And actually, this this really, really touched me, actually, when I, I read this. So, Zoe, I, I don't know if you're on Facebook or Instagram, but I hope that you are listening or watching. Or maybe you're on YouTube, because we do post to YouTube later. I uh, just wanted to say thank you again to Liz and the amazing wellbeing team for doing such a great job, really helping me through such a tough time. I listened all through furlough. I was off from the end of March and went back to work for a week and now going to be made redundant. My 24-year-old son and 21-year-old daughter have also been made redundant. With positive vibes from the magazine and Insta stories and lives, this has helped more than I can explain. I've made so many recipes. I've used lots of great codes, started a little Instagram shop selling handmade patchwork and applique cushions, which I started as a furlough hobby. Learned so much about HRT, which is helping me in my journey with perimenopause symptoms. Now on HRT patches, which is helping me cope with those symptoms as well as everything else. And that is from Zoe. And Zoe added a couple of pictures. And Zoe, I hope you don't mind me sharing them because they just they just touched me so much. Um, I can feel myself getting quite emotional actually when I, I read this. You've said, plus, my dad making pineapple upside down cake. That was from the last issue of the magazine. I help care for my dad with Alzheimer's and we often cook and bake together. He loved making this cake and he loved eating it. And I printed off the pictures that Zoe sent me. This is Zoe's dad making the pineapple upside down cake and this proud looking dad displaying his pineapple upside down cake isn't that wonderful and i have to say that is an especially good recipe oh my days if you haven't tried that seriously amy i know you're on facebook thank you hi thank you for manning facebook i don't know if we've got pineapple upside down cake on the website or maybe it was just in the magazine but if we have got it do please pop a link up uh, anyway just to say with the magazine as i keep saying because time is now ticking it is going to become subscription only so I really don't want you to miss it. I know at the moment you can pick it up in shops like Waitrose, Marks and Spencer, Sainsbury's, etc. Um, but it is from next month. Well, it's kind of this month, isn't it? Because we're August the 1st tomorrow. How did that happen? How did we get to be the eighth month of the year? 
I mean, this it's just kind of racing, isn't it? In some ways it's going really slowly, in other ways it's, it's galloping. Anyway, we are coming out of retail, but we will continue to print. But you do have to subscribe, and there's a special offer with all that blah, so I won't, I won't bore you about that, but click the link in Linktree in my Instagram. Amy, I know that you'll pop the link up. So, ta-da, 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 what am I going to talk about? Actually, I'm going to do one more thing before I get into my super excitement. And I'm at my studios and I received this little gift that turned up on my doorstep this morning uh, as I was standing there with wet hair, having just come back from a run. Um, very nice delivery man was looking for Liz. I said, yeah, that's me. So this was from Oddbox. I don't know whether you've heard about Oddbox, but they are a food delivery box company and they fight food waste, they say here, and they help save the planet because everything that goes into their box, and I'll show you here, it's a flipping big box, so I hope I don't oh, strain myself. So I got this, okay, from Oddbox, and remarkably, everything that's in this is waste. Can you believe it? So, you know, I've got here, I've kind of got bagged spinach, I've got loads of really delicious pears. I had one of these for breakfast this morning. Um, I've got avocados, I've got peppers, I've got chard, I've got beetroot. Um, oh, lovely big bunch of beetroot. We've got a great beetroot recipe actually on the West uh, homepage at the moment. Amy, maybe you can highlight a link to that because that's really good. Love beetroot. And of course, it's just so incredibly good for us. I've got cauliflower. I love making, um, I think it's my yearbook too. I've got a cauliflower pizza recipe where you use the ground up cauliflower as a pizza base. I've even got a melon just fab and what they say about it is uh, all of this produce that you buy from them would be wasted it would go to waste isn't that extraordinary so they rescue fruit and veg they say um, from retailers that won't take it from British farmers due to the requirements on shape isn't that I mean nothing I showed you was out of shape was it okay um, or it might be the wrong size or the wrong colour uh, and it pays farmers a fair price. They put it in cardboard boxes and they deliver it to more than 30,000 Londoners. They also partner with charities fighting food poverty like City Harvest and Felix Pro Project, donating our own surplus at the end of each week. And with every medium-sized fruit and veg, odd box, you prevent seven kilos of food going to waste, saving six kilos of CO2 and 1,328 litres of water. Wow. Good on you guys. Lovely uh, to receive that. Thank you very much indeed. And I'm sure you can find them if you're interested online. Where are they? Um, Odd Box London, it looks like. Certainly on Instagram and Facebook, Odd Box London. Uh, so London spelt L-D-N. I guess if you just Google um, Odd Box, you will find them. Now, talking about boxes. Da -da -da -da. I do feel that I could have a drum roll or something. This is a bit of a kind of... You know, this is a big moment for me. I'm launching something that I have been working on for a while behind the scenes to do with gut health and fermented foods, as you might have gathered. So I hinted at it on Wednesday and I said I was going to be doing something with the 5K. And, you know, was it running 5K? No, it's the, the 5Ks of fermented. So, um, oh, thanks, Tricia, on Facebook. Could I say thank you for the free download, which I did on Happy Tum? Marvellous. Well, I'm glad you've got that because I'm going to be talking about that very thing. Um, you are sending a drum roll. Brace well, Angela. Thank you. I appreciate that. So as you may well know, uh, many years ago, I wrote this book. It's called The Good Gut Guide. And it has a six week eating plan to kind of repopulate our gut with good bacteria and lots of recipes and all of that. And it was really popular. And I was really interested to continue my journey into writing about gut health and gut friendly foods and it's been something that I have totally been a poster girl for ever since so you know you know me never knowingly without my kefir even traveling um, I'm drinking kombucha I'm brewing up scobies I'm making yogurt all of that stuff and I have been inundated over the years with questions saying What's the best probiotic to buy? How do I get my SCOBY? What grains do I buy? All of those things. So we put together the free download, which I really hope you have, because, oh my goodness, I've just realised it's your last day. It's the last day to get it free today, July the 31st. If you are listening or watching in real time, please don't miss out. I mean, you can still get it. 
after that, you just have to pay for it. So it'll go to the normal ebook price of 4 99 and it's on lizardwellbeing.com. You'll find it as the free download. Um, so in that, I put in lots of updated research because obviously this book went to print several years ago and there's been a lot that's happened. So it's a very good basic guide and I still absolutely stand by it. But there have been some newer developments and also I talk in that guide about the things that I do. So the probiotics that I take because that's what everybody wants to ask, you know, come on, is what's in your fridge? What do you give your kids? All of that. So I've put all that information in the e-guide. And then moving on from that, I thought, you know, I'm always being asked, where do I get kefir grains? Where do I buy my kombucha? How do I make kvass? All of that stuff. So I tracked down this really good company in Britain, a little fermented food company called Freshly Fermented. And I've worked with them to create, this is the drum roll, to create this. It's the Lazar Wellbeing Good Gut Box. And in here, you will have six different starter cultures to make everything you need to have a happier, healthier tum. And it's super easy. Uh, the details are all on Lazar Wellbeing. If you go to lazarwellbeing.com, just put in good hyphen gut hyphen box, good gut box, it'll pop up with all the details. It's £35, and I will show you what you get. So you get, starting off, um, you get your SCOBY. So this is an organic kombucha SCOBY. And this is what I used to make this. Okay, so this is my kombucha that I've been brewing now for the last couple of weeks, which is why um, Mrs. SCOBY up here has now got baby SCOBY growing underneath. So I'm about to decant that, split it out into two more SCOBYs. I'm going to be doing that next week. So if you want to... Join me with some kombucha making. I'm also going to be back on this morning actually showing Eamon and Ruth how to make kombucha. So I'm going to save that for then. Um, so you get your organic kombucha. You get um, really high quality organic green tea to make your kombucha. Okay, because it's like all of these things, the quality of the produce that you make is only ever as good as the ingredients that go into it. So I wanted to make sure that you had easily so that you could just get started straight away. Okay, you didn't have to rush out and think, where's my tea, where's my organic sugar, all of that. So um, this is a really good organic, um, it's called Chunmi loose leaf green tea. So I'm gonna use that to make my kombucha scoby. I mentioned sugar, so just to make it easy, I've got some organic fair trade sugar in a paper bag. That's enough for your kombucha and also for the water kvass that I'm gonna show you in a moment how to make. Got two lots of kefir grains. Of course, I couldn't have a gut health box, could I, without kefir grains? Again, it's all organic, so I've got two here. This is the one that I'm going to show you today because I've not really talked about this before. This is organic water kefir. So if you don't, for whatever reason, want to use dairy or you just want to have a really refreshing summer drink, you can use this with water. You can make it with coconut water. It's really super, super easy. Um, and once you've got it, you won't want to be without it. So that is the water kefir that you get in there. We've also got organic milk kefir grains. Um, and again, I'll show you, so easy to do. Um, I can show you how to do that as well if you haven't done it before. But this just gives you the exact right quantity and it's just super easy. This is all in degradable packaging, by the way. Don't think that I'm inundating with lots of plastic. This is really fun. This is an organic turmeric bug starter. So this is going to make an amazing turmeric drink, fermented turmeric drink, which you can have on its own. You can mix it with juices. You can add it to sparkling water. You can make turmeric martinis. Lots of fun things. So I'm going to save this for next week, okay, because I just haven't got time to, to do everything today because there's so much um, that you can do. This is also something that I'm going to save for next week. This is really interesting, and I was really pleased to discover this. This is organic creme fraiche. So creme fraiche is fermented, which is why it's so easily digested and it's a really good, useful alternative to double cream. So if you've got lots of puddings that you're making this summer, you're making trifles and jellies and tarts and fruits and all of those kind of things, to have organic creme fraiche. And it's quite pricey, you know, when you, when you buy it. Um, you can make it really easily. Of course, if you make your own, you're not having lots of single-use plastic pots either. So it's cheaper, it's more environmentally friendly and it's fun. So, and it's very easy. So that I'm going to do um, next week. And then, last but not least, is the yoghurt. Now, 
There are so many different strains of yogurt, and I know we've had conversations, haven't we, in the past about different types of yogurt and why is some yogurt really thin and other yogurt is thicker, and do you need to heat it or can you make it cold? So anyway, so I did my research, as you would expect, and I discovered that there are very distinct strains of yogurt that will produce different textures and thicknesses. So here I give you the choice. If you're going to go online and look at the Good Gut box, you will have a choice of yogurts and it depends whether you have a yogurt maker or not because the really lovely thick creamy yogurt needs a yogurt maker. Okay, so we've also provided a link to that if you happen to want to get one of those. They're really inexpensive and they're very useful to have because this is mine here. It comes with the little glass jars, so you know it's a good investment. Um, so if you want the thick yogurt, and that's the one I'm going to be showing you today, this is the one that you go for. You go for the organic Bulgarian yogurt, okay? If you don't want to use a yogurt maker, and you don't have to use a yogurt maker, it's all about keeping the yogurt really warm. So if you have an Arga plate, you could put it on there. If you have a hot radiator, you could put it on there. You could put it on a hot water bottle, on a metal tray, you know, that just keeps it warm underneath. Some people make their yogurts in a flask, like a thermos flask. So they put the warm milk into there and then they you know, put the lid on just to keep the, keep the warmth. Lots of different ways to do it. Obviously, the easiest way is a yogurt maker. Um, but if you don't fancy that then go for this version instead, which is the organic Vili yogurt. So Vili is a different strain. You make it cold. It doesn't need to be heated at all. Uh, it's super, super easy to make. You just add the contents of this little pack to some cold milk and leave it, and it turns into yogurt. It's magic. Now, it is quite thin. So if you like a pouring yogurt, you know, to pour onto berries or fruit salad, if you want a pouring yogurt that you're going to add to shakes or smoothies, absolutely, you know, this is completely fine. If you, though, want your thicker, creamier yogurt, then go for the Bulgarian. Okay, so I hope that is clear. Um, so, yes, yeah, so basically, oh, and there's more, sorry, you also get, let me just make sure I, I cover it all. You'll get a little letter from me that tells you all about it, so um, that tells you everything that you've got in the box. You, you will always have your milk kefir grains, your organic water kefir grains, your organic kombucha, uh, kombucha scoby, your organic turmeric bug, the Bulgarian yogurt, this is all organic by the way, organic Bulgarian yogurt and short strain villi starter, which I've just talked about, and the creme fraiche, the organic creme fraiche as well. Um, so interestingly, the short strain villi, which is the thin yogurt, that's Scandinavian, so they use a lot of pouring yogurts, whereas the thicker one that needs heating, that's the Bulgarian, okay? Oh, and you get the green tea, and you get the sugar. So that's all coming in this one little box. Uh, and you also get some recipe cards. So I just pop those in as a bonus. So you get three recipe cards, which are all gut-friendly recipes that come from my gut health book. So just as a little extra, we've just popped those in for a little bit of inspo as to how to keep the gut health going and ways that you can use yogurt for cooking or things like that so let's get going what are we going to do first let me clear the decks a bit i think i might do the water kefir first because i haven't talked about this before and it's so easy um and my kids love it let's find the kefir here we go oh, that's the milk one that's the water one there you go look look at that that's what it looks like you've got these little kind of crystally things here um, and they just grow and you, you save them, okay? What is Zoe's Instagram for cushions? I don't know. Zoe, are you watching? That would be nice, wouldn't it? You're going to have lots and lots of people coming to look at your cushions and things during um, that you're making. Uh, oh, it's just rained in Devon, has it? Mm, that's boring. Um, it's very hot and sunny here in London. I'm in southwest London and it is, it is hot. Do I look glowing? If I don't look too hot, because it is quite hot. I shut the um, windows and doors because of, you know, outside noise, hopefully. Uh, you will forgive me if I look a bit glowy. Right, okay, so let's get going with this. Um, by the way, when you get your box, you need to go back to the website just to download all the instructions, because there are so many bits of instructions, and you might want to download them onto your phone or your laptop. You might want to print them off. So if you print them off, this is basically what they look like. I've just printed off a set here, and then you've got them depending on which yogurt you get, etc. So put those to one side, and let's get going with water kefir. Now the key thing, you really only need uh, two things. 
once you've got your kefir grains, you need water and sugar. That's it. Um, important to use non-chlorinated water. Chlorine is obviously a very, very good disinfectant and a very, very good bug killer. So what we don't want it to do <laughs> is deactivate all the lovely bugs in our water-based kefir. So let me open this. I say this is degradable packaging. There we go. Just going to snip that. I have just washed my hands, so it's important to keep everything super clean. So this is 20 grams of my water-based kefir. There we go, I'm going to pop that into there. And into that, I think it's a litre of uh, water in this one. Let me just double, double check to make sure I've got it right. Or is it half a litre? Half a litre. Non-chlorinated water. You can use coconut water, if you like, if you want to make a coconut um, kefir drink. I mean, technically, as you guys know, as I've talked about this before, it's not technically kefir, because kefir comes from the beneficial bacteria digesting the lactose in the animal milk proteins. So you can't really make kefir with anything other than animal milk. You can make a probiotic drink, which is really good for your gut, absolutely. You shouldn't technically call it kefir. Anyway, this is called water kefir, so bear with me for that. So I've got my water filter here. I'm using my zero water jug, which I do like. Or you can use any kind of filtered water, or you could buy bottled water, but just make sure it doesn't have the chlorine. And then all you need to do is add a tablespoon of sugar. Uh, where did I put my sugar? There's my sugar. And don't worry about adding sugar to things like kefir um, because the that's what the beneficial good gut bugs, that's what they eat. Okay, That's how they grow and ferment. They munch it all up. So they actually digest it for us, which is why things like kefir are very low in sugars, even though you make them with sugar, you know, including things like this. This is my kombucha, my scoby, which I'll be showing you next week. Um, to make that, I use a lot of sugar. And, you know, it's all a bit, a bit disconcerting, especially when you're someone like me who tends not even to have sugar in the house, really, to shove in a whole load of sugar with some warm tea to make this really, really sweet tea. But, of course, by the time it ferments, after 10 days or so, all those lovely bacteria and yeast in the SCOBY have digested it for us. So you end up with something that's low sugar, tiny little bit of alcohol, in, um, often in fermented, well, anything fermented, really. So, you know, with the kefir, the water kefir and the... Um, kombucha as well and the longer you keep it the more but it, you know it's I think with kombucha it's something like 0.05 percent and you can dilute it and you know so it's unless that's a major issue for you it shouldn't hopefully be too much of a problem so I'm going to this is organic fair trade raw cane sugar only the best and I'm just going to add yeah I reckon that's about a tablespoon a tiny bit more maybe um and then you just stir it. You know, you, you can, if you want to, you can use warm water. It'll make it dissolve faster. There's this whole thing about not using metal with kefir. Again, I researched that, and it seems to be that what you don't want to do is store kefir in metal. Same with kombucha. You don't want it to be in contact for a long period of time. But, you know, if you are just using a spoon to stir stuff or a metal sieve, then it's fine. You know, the purists, I guess, would always reach for a wooden spoon or a nylon sieve and you know you can do that too but yeah that has all just dissolved and so what you would do now with that is you would put it into a container you could just cover this actually if you wanted to I think it's quite nice to pop it into a jar so I've just got a normal regular kilner jar and I'm going to pop that in there and that will take well, to be honest, it depends on the temperature. 12, maybe 12 to 24 hours. At the moment, it's really warm, so it's not going to take very long. In the winter time, or if it's colder, it will take longer. I am going to seal that. I'm going to put the lid down. But if you notice it start to ferment and bubble, you should really do what they call burp your jars. So that is where you just lift the lid and it goes like that. Well, obviously, it doesn't actually make that noise, but you know, you get the picture. It goes burp. And that is just to release it. And uh, I don't know if you saw me on this morning with Phil and Holly. I forget when it was. Um, talking about kefir. Was it kefir I was talking about? Yeah, I was talking about, oh, fermented drinks. And of course, on live television, big mistake. I hadn't checked the bottle. <laughs> I unscrewed it and it just whoosh, went everywhere. Anyway, so that's what's happened. It's not dangerous or anything. It just just be aware that it might over fizz. So it's always good to give it a little burp along the way. So I'm going to leave that now and then 
at the weekend, got some lovely kefir, and then you save your grains, obviously, and then you can repeat the process. So the whole thing, what I really love about doing fermented things at home is that they are incredibly economical. You know, once you've got your really good quality starters, which I've selected here, as I said, you know, they're all organic. They are all properly made by people who really understand and know what they're doing across a wide range of fermentation. Um, freshly fermented, you'll find the link. You'll go through lazarwellbeing.com. You'll get to their website and you'll see loads and loads of good things. I, I buy all sorts of other things from them, actually. This is something else um, which you might like to add into your basket um, or come back to. This is apple cider vinegar, which I'm making. So they give you the starter for this and water. And I've had that now for about... It's about three weeks. I wrote on here. I started it on the 22nd of June and it says leave for eight weeks. So actually, yeah, what are we now? June, July. Yeah, now I've got a few more weeks to go, but that is brewing away nicely. And you know, these things are really expensive. You buy a little bottle of organic apple cider vinegar and, uh, and you know, it's, it's quite pricey. So really nice and very satisfying to make it yourself. Great, so that is water kefir. So the next thing I thought I would do, sorry, we're racing a bit. I know that we're running up to one o'clock if you're watching in real time, um, is the yogurt. And I just wanted to talk about the different types of yogurt. Let me get my little box for those of you who are coming in late, late for class. Uh, where are we? Okay, so yeah, I've got the, this is the turmeric bug starter and the creme fraiche. Can't wait to be making that next week. Um, which I might try it at the weekend, and then I've got some ready. So here again, this is where you've got the choice. So if you go online and, and you, you're faced with the option, you either have the Villy yogurt, which is cold, no yogurt maker, really easy, quite thin, delicious, but thin. Uh, and this one is the organic Bulgarian yogurt, which is the thicker one, which is the one that I'm going to do. So what you need here is you need a litre of whole milk. And as you know, I will always use whole milk full fat um it's this is locally from a vending machine near me i love the vending machine system no plastic and no excess packaging supporting local farmers in the community and we've got a list of all those lovely farms around the uk doing vending machine milk including raw milk you can also use raw milk if you want to to make yogurt so i have just heated this i'm going to take the skin off it um, so I've heated this and I've let it cool. Okay, so it's starting off quite warm. Let me just take that away. There we go. One second. Um, actually, I might use my wooden spoon again for this. Let me get the clean one. And it's, again, it's so easy. It's not really a demonstration at all um, because you just take your starter culture um, and you add it to the milk and the trick really with this and also when you're doing kefir is to stir things really well okay you want to make sure that all the little starter granules which you'll be able to see me pop into here um, are really evenly dispersed throughout the warm milk because that is what's going to create magically these magical little microbes are going to turn milk into something quite extraordinary and I have to say the flavour of this yoghurt is really good it's not too acidic it's not too sharp and it's deliciously thick so if you are thinking about getting a yoghurt maker this would be a good one definitely to try um, or as I say you could try the thermos flask method um, you could try putting it in a glass bowl and putting the bowl onto a hot water bottle you know there are lots of ways that you can keep it um, warm but I think if you get into the habit of doing this you know this I actually might have to unplug my yogurt maker because I've had it on here ready um, but let me just unplug it and I can show you this is the one that I've got I also got this from freshly fermented I really like it it's a, it's a digital one it just is so simple and easy to use it comes with seven of the little glass jars so you just keep the glass jars. You can actually pop fruit in the bottom of them or on the top or, you know, crispy, crunchy cocoa nibs or something if you're doing stuff for the kids and they, you know, rather than those kind of plastic, ugh, pasteurised corner yogurts, you know, that you peel off, you can give them other stuff, nuts and seeds and things that they could sprinkle in. So literally, I feel a bit of a fraud here telling you how to make it because all I've done is I've added the powders to the warm milk and then in this case, I will just top up my little jars 
and set them on the yogurt maker, which keeps it at a, at a constant temperature. It's just like a, a little warming plate, like a little mini warming plate. It's safe, it doesn't get too hot, and it keeps it, well, how long does it keep it? Well, it depends, really. Um, 42 degrees, that's the optimum. So if you've got a digital set like this or you buy a yogurt maker and just make sure that it's around 42 degrees and it's about eight hours so i will often do this this will often be my friday night activity i'm doing it obviously ahead of time now and just set it overnight and it doesn't actually matter if it runs a bit longer it's not going to spoil just turn it off in the morning um, and i've got fresh yogurt for breakfast so really good and this uh, one liter will make my whole batch and then, I hear you say, what happens when you've eaten all the yoghurt? Well, do not eat all of it. You need to... Um, so I'm just looking at messages there. Oh, technical. Oh, what's this? Hey, Facebook, just asked if I'd like to connect to my Fire Stick. Just added Facebook app. And Liz, you're now live on my TV. That's from Margaret. How exciting! Back on television via a Facebook app. Oh, weird, isn't it? This technology just can't can't keep up with it, really. I do hope you're all subscribed to my YouTube channel. Please do subscribe, because I've been putting some films up on there, so you might want to take a look over the weekend. Um, so, yes, yeah, so what I was saying is do not eat all your yoghurt. I know it can be really tempting, because it's so delicious, and you'll just want to scoff it all, but don't. Make sure that you keep... Oh, maybe I'm overfilling these. Um, make sure you keep a bit back, maybe half a jar like that to make your next batch okay it's a bit like a chain letter you just got to keep it going so you don't need any more powders you just keep it going you save it and it goes on and on and on so again super economical super easy I might as well just top all these up in here so i get to use them maybe i'll just do a little one the next one that can be my batch to keep um because I know everybody's going to want to eat the rest of it. Yeah, that would be plenty. You only really need about a tablespoon. Um, could you use an easy yolk? Oh, sorry, I missed that. Um, could you make it using soya? Yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, I mean, certainly you could make soya yogurts in a, um, in a yogurt maker. You could use it to make, um, use soya milk if you wanted. It's going to come out slightly differently. The texture will be slightly different. And... They say that the probiotics aren't quite as good because they don't have the lactose. See, it's the lactose protein and sugars, rather, that the beneficial bacteria use to thrive. So if you're using anything like coconut milk or soy milk or almond milk or whatever, you know, they're not real milks. They're just kind of white liquids that don't have the, the sugars in them for the, for the good gut bugs. But that's not to say that they're not valuable, you know, which is why things like um, the water kefir here, which you can make, um, is obviously you know, totally dairy-free and vegan and all of that. Um, so there we go. So I'm, I'll make some more of those things next week. I'll try the turmeric bug because that's really fun and also the creme fraiche and see what else. Um, and le yeah, let me know. Hopefully uh, you might have, I don't know, I, you probably, even if you're ordering it today, you probably won't get it till early next week. But maybe we can cook along. Maybe we can do some stuff together. Uh, Margaret, love your YouTube channel and all my friends do now this is our next project excellent sue oh my goodness liz you should see my lizelle book and magazine collection um yeah absolutely and also saying this is the info you need to send to the doctors like i printed out your hrt info oh my goodness yes that is all a struggle isn't it um do listen to my friday five on that because i have a bit of an update uh, it's not particularly positive but actually, there have been some really good developments. I was in contact with some medics. Uh, sorry, getting the code onto my messages here so I can see what Amy's been writing to me. Um, I was in touch with some American medics uh, who have basically followed up on the World Health study that sorry the, the women's health initiative that was studied uh, 18 years ago published 18 years ago and it's just been updated to say that uh, if you remember they incorrectly linked the use of HRT to breast cancer and what they've now just published I think it was published today uh, they have said that oh actually what we discovered is that for women on the estrogen only HRT um, who've had hysterectomies, 
it actually lowers their risk of breast cancer. Well, fancy that. So 18 years of being told it's increasing your breast cancer risk. We actually now have the evidence to say, sorry guys, we get it wrong. It's lowering estrogen only HRT. And of course, if you're taking micronized progesterone, that also has a very, very low risk. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today because it's a big one. I know anybody who is following and tracking, stalking even Louise Newson, the menopause doctor, you will probably be all over this already because I think she posted about it first thing this morning. But I just wonder whether, you know, our lovely tabloids, Daily Mail, is that going to be a nice headline for you? Can we all wake up tomorrow morning and read about that online, perhaps? Lowering the risk of breast cancer? There's a challenge for you. Let's see. So I nearly need to go, but I just need to say so many of you uh, just loved the Instagram live that I did with Josh Woods. Wasn't he a star? Oh my goodness, Josh. I don't know if you're watching with your team, but you're probably far too busy colouring hair. But it was such a pleasure to have you. Uh, thank you so much for so generously giving us your expertise and your time. Um, lots of laughs over, whoops, all the things that I stashed in my bag. <laughs> Very handily, I just happened to have my Donna May bag. This was also a brand I introduced you to, British female founder-led brand. Uh, loved Donna May's things. She's the head of makeup for Loose Women. She knows a thing or two when it comes to makeup. I just, this has just been so genius. And you basically put all your clutter in here and then you just open it up and spread it all out. So there's no rummaging around trying to find stuff because you just lay it flat. And of course, I have got stashed in here. <laughs> All the Josh Wood things that I liked, the dark, the root smudger for darker blonde, that's totally up my alley, tinted dry shampoo, love that, champagne blonde, semi-permanent treatment gloss, I'm going to give that a go, and this I thought was a genius little thing, this is the root marker, looks like, a, just look like a marker pen or a crayon, better hide that from my kids, otherwise it'll get used for the wrong thing, but that is all getting stashed up, and Donna May, um, we do have Liz Loves, all in capitals on her website, gets you 20% off everything, um, and they're all super reasonably priced, and really good, so highly recommend her, um, I used this morning the everything mask, this was the Josh Wood, this is what you get free, thank you Josh, thank you, uh, this is worth £19, and I did what Josh suggested. I don't know if you watched on Wednesday, but I was talking about using the mask and about how I just used it in the shower. I used it for a few minutes uh, when I came back from my run. And he said, no, Liz, you should put it on before your run. So I did this morning. Yes, I was out running. And I got up this morning, brushed my hair, um, put it all the way through my ends, pulled my hair back in a ponytail, you know, looked absolutely fine. Um, came back, jumped in the shower and rinsed it out. And my hair... You obviously can't reach through and feel it, but it has gone super glossy and super shiny, and I love it. And I think we've only got this weekend to get this, okay, because it's such a special deal. This is £19, and he's giving it away free. So it only lasts, I think, up until midnight on Sunday, if you're watching this in real time. But to get it, you just have to buy anything from his website. So even his lovely shampoos and conditioners or root touch-ups or whatever, they start at £10, so you know it's not expensive, and you get this worth £19 with anything. But warning, you can only use it once, and it's for one person, okay? So don't think, oh, I'll just have that one thing and then go back and get another one. You know, grab what you want to, basically. Um, and then what you do is you... you buy all your stuff in your basket or whatever you want, you add the everything mask, so you add the full size and you'll see it'll come up £19, everything mask, and then when you go to checkout, it says apply code, and you put Liz Loves in capitals, and as if by magic, the discount fairy comes along and wipes it off the bill, <laughs> so you don't pay for it. Okay, so it's completely free. So, But that is just for the next few days. And this is the only time I will talk about it because obviously I'm not doing my Instagram or Facebook lives over the weekend. I'll be back with you on Monday, by which time this will have expired. The other thing, of course, that will have expired is the free download for the Happier Flatter Tum. So if you want that free as well, please go and grab that before midnight on Sunday. Just to say, my podcast will be coming up any moment. That's the Friday Five. I've been talking to the founder of The Naked Pharmacy. You may have heard me talk about these 
guys before. This is some of their eco packaging. Um, this is some of the stuff that I've been taking. And in particular, I wanted to talk to the founder, Kevin Levers, who is a, a proper bona fide pharmacist and worked in conventional pharmacy, working with pharmaceuticals, you know, for decades. And then he went on be to become the first... Now, he was the head pharmacist at Walida. Do you know that lovely uh, naturopathic brand, herbal brand? Fascinating story. I loved talking to him. I just asked him to drop in just for a few minutes on my Friday Five. And really to talk about Safrasun, because this is something that I've started taking, and I have been giving it to my youngest son for ages. And it really helps with his anxiety levels and his kind of, you know, slightly hyperactivity. And it's made from crocuses. And I wanted to get all the information on that. I've written about it before in Lizard Wellbeing. You probably would have seen it in Liz Loves. It's something that I do genuinely rate. And I wanted to understand a bit more about it. So I invited him onto the podcast. Completely fascinating. And we do now have a 20% discount. Originally, we started with 10%. And we said, come on. Come on, I want to share this a bit more widely. So they've upped it to 20% off everything on Naked Pharmacy website. So super worth having a look. Liz loves 20. That's all you need for that on Naked Pharmacy. But do have a listen to his podcast with me because he was very interesting. And I hope that he will come back actually and talk about other things because some of their other really interesting plant-based products include things like olive leaf that I've written about before and turmeric, obviously. So anyway... Um, I've just realised I've got my magazine here. I've just realised I'm matching. That was, I'd like to say that was carefully planned, <laughs> but it wasn't. This is the Aspiga top that I wore on Monday and we checked and it has come back into stock. I know Lucy said that it had sold out um, and she was getting some more in and I checked and that also has a 10% Liz Loves and I even matched my yearbooks. I've got more of those signed as well. I think that is it. What a jam-packed Friday feeling the vibes for Friday, fermenting Friday. I hope that you love everything that I have shown you and talked about. I hope it's given you some food for thought, maybe some real food for good gut bugs as well. I am going to be off social media this weekend. How's that going to go? I'm going to take myself off just for the weekend. Listening to my own advice, do a little bit of a digital detox because it's been a bit, a bit overwhelming with various things uh, this, this week. So I thought, actually, do you know what? I'm just going to have a bit of family time and I'm just going to focus on other stuff. And be back with you fresh, fresh and ready and full of the joys of August to um, talk about on, on Monday. Yeah, Monday. Wow, Monday the 3rd of August. How can that be? Anyway, thank you so much for being with me. It's always such a pleasure. Thank you so much for all your lovely feedback. Um, I hope that we've discovered Zoe's Instagram so we can all go and look at her lovely applique um, and sending love to you, Zoe, and to your dad as well. I hope you enjoy a weekend of baking and go well. Uh, see you Monday. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.